Hello, Algebra 1 students. This is Mrs. Yowd. Today I'm going to teach you Chapter 7, Lesson 2, which is all about multiplying polynomials. Please have out your journals open to page 211. The FOIL method, which is up here, is actually explained down here. So I actually don't like the FOIL method, to be perfectly honest. I'm going to show you two other methods down below in the notes section. But if you would like to read about the FOIL method, this is probably one of the most common ways of teaching multiplying polynomials. But I don't like it because you cannot use it for multiplying a binomial by a trinomial. The FOIL method only works when you multiply a binomial by another binomial. The two methods that I would like to teach you about is the distributive method and the table method. We're going to do the exact same problem twice, once using the distributive method and once using the table method. So let's first look at the distributive method. What I'm going to do for the distributive method is I'm going to start with my first term in my first polynomial, and I'm going to multiply that by both of the terms in the second binomial. So in other words, I'm going to do 2x multiplied by x, and then add it to 2x multiplied by negative 7. Then I'm going to take the second term, which in this case is positive 3, and I'm going to multiply it also with the two terms in the second binomial. So that's going to be plus 3 multiplied by x, and then another plus 3 multiplied by negative 7. Now to simplify this, when we simplify 2x multiplied by x, we're going to get 2x squared. And then when we simplify this, we're going to get 2x multiplied by negative 7, so that's negative 14x. When we multiply these together, 3 times x is 3x. And we multiply these together, we get negative 21. The last step is just to combine like terms. So I notice that I have these two terms that can be combined. So I'm going to get 2x squared minus 11x and then minus 21. Notice that I have my answer already written in standard form. And so I know that that is correctly written. OK, let's take a look at the table method. So in the table method, we want to look and see we have uh, two uh, a binomial here because there are two of them. So I'm going to draw a table that's a 2 by 2. And the reason why I chose that is because I have a binomial multiplied by a binomial. So that means I need 2 across and 2 down. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the 2x here and the plus 3. And on the side, I'm going to put x minus 7. And where I got that from is my two binomials. So here's 2x plus 3, 2x plus 3. Here's x minus 7. So I go down x minus 7. So now what we're going to do is we're going to multiply in to the box. So x multiplied by 2x is 2x squared. And then we have x multiplied by 3. So we're going to go into here. We're multiplying in. So x times 3 is 3x. And then we're going to multiply in 2x times negative 7. If you think about Punnett squares when you're in uh, science, this is very similar to that. So this is negative 14x. And then the last box would be negative 7 multiplied by, negative, by positive 3, excuse me. So that would be negative 21. OK, so now I need to look and see what I have here. I notice that I can simplify these two terms by combining them together. So my final answer, I still have a 2x squared. I want to make sure to write it in standard form. So I'm going to put my 2x squared first. Then I'm going to combine these two middle terms together here. So that'll be negative 11x. And then I'm going to put the minus 21 at the end. So you'll notice that in both cases, I got the exact same answer, whether I did it using the distributive property or I did it using the table method.
And it just kind of depends on what you like better. Some people are very visual, and so they like to have a visual representation of what's happening. Some people like the distributive method better, and so they prefer to do it this way. So you decide whichever you would like to do better. Uh, we're going to practice both ways on the next page. So on this page, we're told that they want us to use the distributive property, the distributive method for these first six problems. So let's go ahead and do it the, using the distributive method. Uh, we're gonna, I'm going to start with my first term, so x multiplied by x, which would be x squared, x multiplied by negative 1, which is negative 1x. Now I'm going to take my second term, which is negative 2, Negative 2 multiplied by x is negative 2x. Then we're going to do negative 2 times negative 1, which is positive 2. At the last, I need to combine like terms, so I notice that these two can be combined together. So my final answer is going to be x squared minus 3x plus 2. Okay, I'm going to do a couple of, or one more other problem with you, and then I'll let you try one on your own. Let's go ahead and take a look at number 5. 3n multiplied by n is 3n squared. 3n multiplied by 1 is 3n. Now I'm going to take my negative 4, multiply it by n, and I get negative 4n. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. Now we need to combine like terms. So I have 3n squared minus 1n, which is just n, and then minus 4. And that's my answer for number 5. I'll go ahead and do one more problem with you. Let's go ahead and take a look at number 6. r multiplied by 3r is 3r squared. r times 2 is 2r. 3 multiplied by 3r is 9r, and 3 times 2 is 6. Now we need to combine our like terms, and so my final answer is 3r squared plus 11r plus 6. Okay, so I would like you to go ahead and try numbers 2, 3, and 4 on your own. For number 2, I got b squared minus b minus 6. For number 3, g squared plus 6g plus 8. And for number 4, 2a squared plus 3a minus 5. If you made any mistakes, see if you can find them. This time, we're going to use the table method. So they went ahead and drew our boxes for us, so we just need to fill in the boxes. So on number 7, I have x minus 3 and x minus 2. So I'm going to put x minus 3 and x minus 2. Incidentally, it doesn't really matter what order you put these in. So if I wanted to put the x minus 3 along the side, I could, and then the x minus 2 up along the top. It makes absolutely no difference which one goes along the top and which one goes along the side. Okay, let's go ahead and multiply in. So I have x multiplied by x, so that's x squared. And I have x multiplied by negative 3, so that's negative 3x. Now I have x times negative 2, which is negative 2x. And lastly, negative 2 times negative 3, which is positive 6. So I notice that I can combine together these two right here. So my final answer is going to be x squared minus 5x plus 6. Okay, I'll go ahead and do a few more problems with you. Let's go ahead and take a look at number 11. So I'm going to write the, I'm going to go ahead and do it the other way. So I'll do 6h and then minus 2 here. And then I'll do negative 3 minus 2h. So notice that I'm, I'm, I did it differently. I put this one along the side this time. And remember, it doesn't really matter where you put them. You can put the, this one along the top or along the side. It doesn't matter. Okay, let's go ahead and multiply these through now. 
So I have 6h times negative 3, which is negative 18h. Now we're going to have 6h multiplied by negative 2h. So it's negative 12h squared. Now I'm going to go negative 2 times negative 3, which is positive 6. And lastly, negative 2 multiplied by negative 2h, which is positive 4 h. This time I notice that these two can be combined together. And so my final answer is going to be negative 12 h squared. Notice that I'm making sure to write it in standard form. So I needed to write this one first. And then I have negative 18 and positive 4. That would be negative 14 h and then plus 6. Always write your answers in standard form. Okay, let's go ahead and do one more. I'll do number 12 with you. So I'm going to go ahead and write my two terms. So I have negative 3 and 4j. And I have 3j and positive 4. Okay, let's go ahead and multiply them in. So we have 3j times negative 3, which would be negative 9j. Next, I have 3j times 4j which is 12j squared. Next I have 4 times negative 3, so that would be negative 12. And last I have 4 times 4j, which would be 16j. Okay, so now let's take a look at my like terms. I see that I have these two that are like terms, so those will be go going together. So my final answer will be 12j squared plus 7j minus 12. Okay, uh, I would like for you to go ahead and do number 8, 9, and 10 on your own. For number 8, I got y squared minus 5y minus 6. Number 9, q squared plus 10q plus 21. And number 10, 2w squared plus, sorry, minus 11w plus 15. If you made any mistakes, see if you can find them. On the next page, we're going to skip 13 through 18 because it's using the FOIL method, which I don't like. So we're going to go straight on to number 19. So you'll notice on all of these, we have a binomial multiplied by a trinomial this time, which is why the FOIL method would absolutely not work on these problems. So I'm going to show you both different methods. I'll start with the distributive method. So I start with my first term, x times x squared is x to the power of 3, x times x is x squared, and x times negative 1 is negative 1x or just negative x. Now I'll take my second term, negative 2 times x squared is negative 2x squared, negative 2 times x is negative 2x, and negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2. So now I need to combine like terms. I notice that I have only 1x to the power of 3, so I'll put that first. Remember, I always want to write it in standard form. Next, I'm going to combine my x squared, so that would be 1 minus 2 is negative 1, so it's negative x squared. Next, I have my x's, so I have these two terms here, so it's negative 3x, and lastly I have a plus 2 at the end. And so this is my final answer for number 19. Let's take a look at number 20. I'm going to use the box method this time, so I have a binomial multiplied by a trinomial, so that means that in my box I need to have a 2 by 3. Okay, so I need to make sure to make it big enough so that I can accommodate all of the terms. So I did it so that the shorter side is on the left. So I'm going to put 2 and minus a because that is my binomial here. Now my trinomial will go along the top. So we have 3a squared and 3a and minus 5. So now we're going to do just like what we've done before. We're going to multiply in. So I notice that I have 2 times 3a squared, so that's 6a squared. Then we have 2 multiplied by 3a, so that's 6a. 
Now 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. Negative a times 3a squared is negative 3a to the power of 3. Negative a times 3a is negative 3a squared. And negative a times negative 5 is positive 5a. Okay, now we need to find our like terms. So I notice that these two can be combined, and also these two can be combined. I need to make sure to write it in standard form. So I'm going to start with my negative 3a squared. Now I'm going to combine my a squareds. So it's 6 minus 3 is positive 3, so positive 3a squared. Now I'm going to combine together just my a's. So it's 6 plus 5, which is 11. So plus 11a. And lastly, I have my minus 10 here. So I'll just put that onto the end. OK, and that's my answer for number 20. OK, I'm going to do one more problem because number 21, something interesting happens on number 21. So I'm going to use the distributive method. So h times h to squared is h to the power of 3. And then we have h times negative h is negative h squared. And last, I have a negative h. OK, so now I'm going to take my second term here and multiply it through. And so we have plus h squared minus h minus 1. So when I combine like terms, uh, I notice that this comes first, because in if I want to write it in standard form. But notice what happens here. We have negative h squared and positive h squared. So those are going to cancel out, so we don't have any more h squareds. So now I have negative h and negative h, so that's negative 2h. And lastly, I have minus 1 onto the end there. OK, so now uh, you have gotten a chance to see which method you like the best. If you like the distributive method, go ahead and use that. If you like the table method, go ahead and use that. Incidentally, on number 23, they wrote the trinomial first. So you have a choice. You can either go backwards when you do your distributive. So you can do your 2n multiplied there, and then your 1 multiplied by all three. Or if you want to, you could take the 3n and multiply it in, and then take the 2n and multiply it in, and lastly take the 5 and multiply it in. So it's up to you. If you want to use the distributive method, you could do it that way. All right, go ahead and uh, do the last three problems on your own. All right, here's what I got for my three answers. And please check your answers. And if you've got any mistakes, see if you can find them. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching.